And it's time for a content video. Let's dive deep to the internet. We're talking about circuits today. I hope you had time to, to play around with this circuit simulator. And you can see we have the two different circuits. Now, this first circuit here on, on the left side, we call that a series circuit. And we call that a series circuit, series circuit, single path. Series circuit, single path. And you can see if we watch our electrons, they can take one singular path here. Now, this, this next circuit that we have here that is, is quite beautiful, we call that a parallel circuit because you see here there are multiple legs of the circuit that run parallel to one another. Now if we look here carefully at these electrons, they come here and they split at the junction. Some electrons go to the top resistor and some go to the second resistor. Now what you were asked to do by your lovely, fantastic, and amazing teacher was to look at these for relationships. First, let's talk about current. If we look here, we can see that the current is reading the same in all of these ammeters in series. It's almost like in series, all the electrons go through everything, so the current must be the same everywhere. It's almost like that, because that's what it is! Amazing. But if we see in parallel, hmm, 0.9 plus point 0.9, <gasps> could it be? That's right, if we think about some of the electrons are in this top loop and some of them are in this bottom loop, but all of them are here. If we add these two up, we would get this other one. What? Now the other thing you were asked to do was to take a look at voltage. And now if we look at voltage, we know that this actually here, this was uh, a nine volt battery. And if we look at this first resistor here, we'll see uh, that this, oh, sorry, <laughs> this resistor here is four and a half, and this other resistor here is four and a half. Hmm, now what is four and a half plus four and a half? No! <laughs> that is right! That is right! You are so smart! So it's almost like in a series circuit, the energy loss in this first one adds with the energy loss in the second one for the total energy. But let's check the parallel one now. For the parallel one, we know that again it's a 9 volt battery and this one's reading nothing. This one is reading <gasps> 9 volts. This other one's reading <gasps> Nine volts. It's almost as if the electrons are only losing their energy in one spot. Hmm. It would be so convenient if there was some way for us to just have like a summary of all of this information. Just like if, if someone could just put up a graphic that would just surmise, look at all this. <sighs> So for our series circuit and current, we're getting the same everywhere, but the voltage is additive and that's something called the loop rule. What it says is if you start at the battery and get back to the battery, you must lose all of the energy you've gained. Loop rule. But for parallel circuits, we're getting that the current is additive and that's something called junction rule. All the electrons coming into a junction must equal to all the electrons leaving the junction. But in voltage is the same for each loop, which is the same as loop rule. These are interesting rules. If only there was an animation that would help us further describe this. Oh, look at this! Look at these little trucks! These trucks are carrying energy. And you can see as after they go through the battery, they lose their energy. But then they come back and they get more and more and more and more. So the idea is, see the little six green things? That's like the energies of the trucks. Now if we go ahead a little bit in this. Ooh! See, now if I have two circuit elements, two light bulbs, you can see some of the energy is lost in the first one, not all, and some is lost in the second. But because they're the same bulb, identical bulb, we're losing three balls of energy, and then I lose the next three in the second bulb. Very interesting. Very interesting. But we can see every truck goes through both bulbs, all of them. That's our current being the same. And here we're seeing that how many balls of energy we have in total? Six. How many are lost in the first one? Three. How many in the second one? Three. So that's our summative or loop rule. If only it would have been so convenient if there was one of these for a parallel circuit. Now, there is? 
<laughs> so now here, you have all of the energy, all six are being lost in each bulb. That's insane! But every truck is not going through all of the bulbs. You can very clearly here see that the trucks are splitting and some trucks go through the first and some trucks go through the second. This is amazing! It's almost like it's our rules that we have for circuits. Now these are pretty simple and pretty basic, but how could these apply to you? How do these apply to your life? Well, lights, lights, ah, mini lights, holiday lights they're sometimes called. You can see here we have them connected in series, where there is a singular path for the electrons to run, lighting up all of the bulbs. Now we could also connect them, as a comparison, in parallel. But what if, let's, let's look at both of these as I try to move in a way that you can see them kind of. The advantages and disadvantages are, are, are immense. The first disadvantage for series is that if one of these bulbs, if this one right there, that yellow one goes out, they all are broken now. All of them go off. In parallel, if, if one of these were to go off, you can see this one's off right here, the rest stay on. That's a huge advantage. Advantage for series, though, is that those bulbs right, require much less wiring to go on. I can have a lot more bulbs, but also what if, I, what if I'm designing a circuit where I want to know that something's broken? I want to know. So they certainly have their applications depending on which one you want. Now, actual light bulbs aren't wired like either of these. Uh, super cheap ones might be wired like series, but the parallel, there's a huge advantage here, but the big problem is it's very, very expensive. So instead, the way they're normally wired is a combo! circuit now what's happening is we have a leg here that is all in series with another but this leg is in parallel with another leg with another leg with another leg so if you've ever noticed these lights you don't get one that goes out there's like a strip of them that go out right a bunch of them go out together and you you know it's one of the ten or so in that in that strain instead of the hundred of bulbs you have it makes it much easier to actually figure out what's going on a combination circuit. I would bet most circuits are combination circuits because certainly life isn't as easy as series or parallel. But if we were to go back to our series and parallel, the question that I have for, then I don't know if you have this question, but the question I have is, if we were to try to use electricity to cook hot dogs, would hot dogs cook faster if they were connected in a series connection? Or would the hot dogs cook faster in a parallel connection? Hmm. I bet you'll have to stay tuned for a future video to, to find out. Uh, I'm being told uh, by my notes here, uh, I'm supposed to say, uh, smash that like and subscribe. Is that how I'm supposed to say it? Smash that like and subscribe. All right, well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching Fizz with Lens.